Hey there, my fellow designers and creatives. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another video in this Rive animation tutorial series. Make sure to go to the link in the description and check out the playlist for the entire course. In this, we're gonna go ahead and set up three animations and I've called this Milestone 1 animation, Milestone 2 and Milestone 3. So the, basically the Milestone 1 animation is this and the second one is this and the third one is this. So depending on what the value is, we will trigger these various animations and we will combine it with the state machine, which I will explain in detail later on and where we will set up the logic, right? So let's get started. Okay, so I'm in a new file and we'll go ahead and create an artboard. Now, essentially, it doesn't matter what the size of the artboard is when you're creating it because you can go ahead and change it anytime you want. But to keep things simple, you always wanna think about where is this animation going to be used and how big do you actually need it to be? Now, in this case, because I'm going to be prototyping it in my mobile phone when I use another software called as Play, there it's pr pretty much going to be the entire width of the screen. So for example, if this is my phone, this must be, I don't know, an iPhone 15 or something like that. The width of this is usually around 300 to 400 pixels. Now I have an iPhone 13 and the width is 390, but if I'm going to prototype in my phone, it's fine. I can set it to 400, all right? So the width of this is going to be 400 and then this section is going to be inside. So this is probably, I don't know, around um, 80 pixels or 50 pixels. I don't really know, right? So 400 is something that I'm going to be using, but again, you don't really have to worry too much about artboard size. You can figure that out later. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to set it to 400 because I can easily view it on my device when I prototype it. So I'm going to come back over here and set this to 400 by 400 and we'll go ahead and say create artboard. Now, and one of the things that you should always do in these tools, um, not unlike Figma, is go ahead and rename everything and rename it very properly because the moment you make mistakes and you use sloppy names, you're gonna go ahead and confuse yourself so much and it's going to drive you mad. So always make sure that you keep things very simple. Now here we're just renaming the artboard, which is fine, but once you go ahead and rename all the other settings and properties, it's gonna be a nightmare. So make sure you come up with a simple convention and I will show you what is the convention that I use to keep things really simple. So over here, I'm just gonna go ahead and call this main animation. Okay, now let's go ahead and import the assets that we created in Figma. So here in Figma, I'm gonna just scroll down over here and I'm going to go ahead and import actually all of this together so that I can get the actual spacings here as well, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and just select all of these items, all right? I can right click, choose copy as SVG and make sure you get this toast message and then come over here and just paste it, you know, command V, just paste it. And here it says uploading SVG uh, from clipboard. And if you go to the assets panel, it should be uploaded over here, all right? So here we have this, all right? And go ahead and just rename this again. So call this uh, progress bar elements, all right? It doesn't really matter, but naming is always good. And I'm gonna come over here and just drag this on to the frame over here, all right? And with a couple of things that we gotta do. Now, the first thing that you see over here is that it imported everything, all right? And uh, we can go ahead and rename all of this in a second, all right? But the first thing that I'll do is I'm actually going to ungroup all of this, all right? So first, let's go ahead and start renaming this, right? So this one is going to be the progress bar, okay? This is going to be base, all right? So basically the one underneath, uh, so if I take the progress bar and move it aside, this one is base, all right? And uh, then we have this, which is going to be star star one. This is going to be star two. And uh, this is going to be star three. Okay, and move them down. And I'm gonna select all of them and then just group this for now, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and call this stars. And I'm going to hide that for now, I don't want it. And I'm put it all, of it, all the way at the bottom, anything that I don't need. We also have the ellipses. Ellipses, we're gonna need that. So I'm just gonna keep that like that. So I'm going to say here, um, dot one, this is going to be dot two, and this is going to be dot three, all right? There we go. Here again, I can select all of them, group them, and here I can say dots. We obviously need them to be on top of everything, all right, so that's fine. And then this is basically our progress bar, and then we have our progress bar base, all right? Perfect. Now, one of the things that you wanna do here is when you click on the animation, you see here that the access point is on the top left, which is like zero, zero, all right? As a simple practice, what you want to do is you want to set this origin to be in the center. Like just the way in every of our groups and elements, the axis here is in the center. We want to do the same thing over here. 
Now, the way to do that is using this option called as origin. And this is basically where it starts, all right? Now, I can go ahead and set this to 50%. As you can see, this is in percentage. So I'm just gonna set this to 50%. And I'm gonna set this also to 50%, all right? Now, that moves things around over here, but that's fine. You can just select all of these items and then just move them over to the center of the screen. And here you will have these snapping guides that will help you. And if you don't have them, just go here and turn on snapping, right? You should have it. Okay, now, what we want to do is create the first animation. That is the most simplest thing possible. So when the value reaches 600, let's just take that as an example, it moves from here to here. So that is the animation that we want to create. Now, to animate things, let's go to the animate tab and you can use, you can press tab on your keyboard to switch between them, all right? And this is basically what we get. Now here, we have a lot of things and of course this is very intimidating, but I'm gonna simplify this very much. I'm gonna give myself some space over here and then I can press F on my keyboard to just center this. So just press F to center this area so we have everything that we can see. Now just forget state machine, forget everything else. We're gonna look into all of that step by step. The first thing here is I'm gonna create that animation over here and you want to create animations in this thing called as a timeline. So if you click on this plus, you have two items. You have a timeline and you have state machine. Now I'm gonna explain what the difference is in much more detail, but state machine is basically a combination of multiple animations. That's about it, right? It's multiple silos of animations that are combined in this one machine that has all the logic. Timeline is just a animation that you will have. There is no logic behind it. But the state machine is where you combine multiple animations based on logic. For example, in the state machine, we can say that when the value is 600 or more than 600, trigger this first animation, change the color of this and change the star and activate the star as well. So all of these are going to be separate animations. And then in the state machine, we combine all the animations together with logic. So in essence, state means state machine is without logic. So in essence, timeline is without any logic and state machine is with logic. Now you can have multiple timelines, but you cannot have multiple state machines. I mean, you can add another state machine, but only one state machine can be active at a time, right? We'll go ahead and just delete this. So this is the active state machine. Now we're gonna timeline one and I'm gonna rename this and I'm gonna call this milestone one animation. And I'm just gonna say MS because the names can be too long. So milestone one animation, okay? So milestone one. So which means we will do the first animation over here. Now, if you've used After Effects or Lottie or anything else, this should be very simple. But if you are not used also, it's totally fine. It's very simple. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the progress bar over here. And in fact, I can actually just, you know, let me just hide the dots for now, okay? Click on the progress bar. And here, if I click on the stroke, we have this option called as trim paths. So if I click on that, you see something happens. Now we have multiple types of trim paths, which is gonna go with sequential for now. And basically what I can do is I can increase or decrease this value and just animate this, right? Now, if I go ahead and when I'm in the animate mode, I change some value, a keyframe gets added over here. So as you can see, this is the keyframe, all right? Now, I want this animation to be one second long. So I'm going to go to one seconds long. Now here you can change the duration and all of that. You can choose uh, uh, frames per second. It doesn't really matter too much at this point. So ignore frame per second if you if you don't really want to focus on that. If you don't understand it too much in detail, don't even bother about it. I'm keeping it at 60, which is the default. Now the duration is one second. We want this animation to be one second. That is a logic that I'm deciding. And over here, what I want is to change this uh, to 100%. Okay, great. Now you can see over here, this is basically what we have. If I play this, it plays. Now, the thing is, I don't want this to move from this side to this side. I want it to move from the other side. As you can see here, it's moving from right to left. I want it to move from left to right. So we're gonna go ahead and try to see how to make that work. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the keyframes for now. Okay. I'm gonna come back to the design mode over here and here in the progress bar. If I go ahead and set the end to 100, okay. And then the start 200 then we get this animation, right? So here you can see the start is 100, end is 100. And then if I reduce this, we get the animation. But for me, these numbers where the progress bar is increasing, but the value is reducing, as you can see over here, 
the value is re reducing right but the progress bar is increasing that is quite counterintuitive for me right i wanted to increase the progress bar and also the number should also increase so what we need to do is i'm going to go ahead and click on the progress bar press enter to go to the path layer so now i'm in the path selection let me zoom in over here press enter again and now i'm in the editing paths mode what you see over here is this triangle which basically means that this is where the animation is starting from so this is the origin now i don't want to do that i want the origin to be this one so i can just click on this right click and i can say make first vertex now something weird happens so if i press enter again this is what we get so the vertex is going like this all i need to do is because you can see the triangle is here the triangle is going like this so this is the first vertex what we want to do is we want to reverse the direction so if i click on say reverse direction it just reverses the direction now the arrow now the triangle is pointing this side and this is basically what we get all right now i have clicked on done editing i can click on the progress bar open this up again and now let me set everything back to 0 0 okay now if i take the start and increase it now you can see that everything is seems to be normal everything is zero and the start is increasing so now if i set this to 50% it goes to 50% and then if i do 100 it goes to the 100% right so now this is this is more logical for me i'm going to go ahead and set this to 50 it doesn't really matter what it is at this state because in animate mode we will define the keyframes so it doesn't matter how it looks like over here so now if i go to the animate mode okay press f again to reset this okay or you can click outside and just press f come over here click on the progress bar okay i'm going to set a start animation of 0% and come to the end and here i'm going to say 100% so now this is basically what we have okay now if i play this this is what we get very simple now this animation is quite linear now of course if you have done motion design you would obviously know that lin linear is not the way to go we are basically adding easing which is also called as interpolation all right which is basically how the velocity the speed all of that is from one state to other right so i'm going to go ahead and choose cubic all right which is basically ease in and ease out all right so if i do this this is what we get and there we go we have a first animation now the animation here what we call as milestone one animation doesn't really mean anything to rive because rive only cares about state machine all right and i can actually keep it i can call the state machine and just keep it as it is so so that you guys don't get confused and what you basically see over here is how the logic is set up now of course this looks too scary what we need just need to focus on is this part because we don't even need this so forget what this is we can keep this over to the side that's not helpful to us maybe i can keep it on the right side over here all right it's not helpful to us we're, we're never going to use this for this animation and if i play this all right if i click over here which is basically play you can see it plays the animation and what it's basically saying when i click on play just trigger the first animation that's there because as you see this is the arrow so it's starting from here and it's coming over here now i can go ahead and set some conditions and logic as you can see but we'll do that later but for now all i'm doing here is i'm just clicking on play and then it plays over here now when i pause this you can see it defaults to what is showing me in the design mode all right and if i play it it just plays the normal animation right it disregards what the default state was and it just plays it because i see the animation over here so i'm going to turn on the dots over here quickly okay and if i play this you can see it goes over the dots now this milestone one animation should end over here it shouldn't end over here right because the milestone one animation is from here to here milestone two animation is from here to here milestone three animation is from here to here so in this case we want it to stop at this point so how do we do this it's pretty simple if we go back to our progress bar here if i come over to the very end i actually set it to 1000 to 100% but we want it to be at 600 points now 600 points is basically 60% because the total is 1000 so if i set this to 60 then this is the animation that we're going to get so that's about it so i can just change that from 100 to 60 now we want to also create the milestone 2 and milestone 3 animations we will use it later on but for now we can just go ahead and create the milestone 2 and milestone 3 animations now i can go ahead and click on new timeline or i can just duplicate this so i can just go ahead and change and duplicate this all right and i'm going to say milestone 2 animation okay 
Now here, the milestone to animation starts when this is already at 60%. So I'm gonna set this to 60. It starts when it's at 60. And then it goes all the way to 780, which in our case is 78%. So the start is going to be 78% over the end over here. So now the milestone to animation is going to do this. That's about it. And it's gonna be over one second. And that's just a rule that I'm deciding, okay? Now we also have the milestone three animation, which goes from 78 to 1000. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say duplicate this, move this down. This is going to be milestone three animation. Uh, it looks like I made a typo. So just change this to um, animation, animation. Okay, so the milestone three, I can click on that. Now from here, the starting point is 78 because the points is seven, 780 points. So 78% and I'm gonna come over here and increase this to be 1000 or basically 100 over here, right? So this is going to be our milestone three animation. This is going to be our milestone two animation. And then this is going to be our milestone one animation. All right. Now in the state machine, we'll obviously combine all of this and set up logic and everything. But for now, these are the three animations that we've created and we've created a simple progress bar animation. Now, one last thing that I wanna do is I wanna add some polishing to this. So I can actually go back to the design mode. I can press tab to go to the design mode, press F to center it. I'm going to click on the progress bar base that you see over here. All right. And I'm just going to increase the thickness over here. So we get some sort of an inset effect. So just go ahead and increase this. So around, around 25 pixels or let's say 30 pixels. I don't know. We can choose 30 pixels. Maybe that's a bit too much. Maybe let's drop down to 26 pixels. Yeah, I think that's fine. And I also want to add some background. So if I come over here, um, I'm basically just picking these colors from here, but for now I'm just gonna pick this one uh, shade of blue. I'm gonna copy that from Figma. Come over here, go to the main animation. I'm gonna click on the fill and I'm going to paste that. But what I actually want is a bit of a linear shadow. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just move this up over here, okay and uh, move this down over here and add these colors. So I'm just go ahead and just paste this color, both the colors, okay? And for the one at the bottom, I'm just gonna go ahead and just come to the brightness and I'm just going to decrease that so we get a nice effect over here like so, all right? Something that's very subtle, maybe around 35, uh, 30, oh, sorry, 35%. All right, so in the next one, we'll go ahead and set up logic and how to make more sense of this animation. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me in the comment section down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in the next video. So then take care and bye-bye.